Hey, what's up, Reefers? Exciting day. Today I want to talk a little bit about the Aquatic Life T5 Hybrid that I just picked up. So I actually bought this unit. This is not a, a sponsor of video or anything like that. So this would be my honest opinion. Now, I have been looking for a T5 retrofit options uh, for my 45 gallon tank for a long, long time. And the only option I saw was pretty much the Giesman. I think I'm pronouncing it right. And it cost about $1,000, so it's ridiculous. It's out of my price range. So these guys came onto the scene uh, this year at Magna, and uh, it, made, it was making waves because uh, now we finally have a affordable T5 retrofit option. Now this unit is a 24 inches long. Um, it supports two T5 bulbs in each, each fixture. So it's two separate fixture, right? With separate uh, line outs. And I also bought a Ford ATI Blue Plus. Now this fixture, fixture costs about $250 if I remember it right. And they also come with 36, 40, uh, the 40 range. And I think they're gonna release some even longer ones. Uh, but for me, it's the 24 inches uh, in length. And the cool part is that in the middle, basically is a uh, bring your own LED lights. They have different mounting brackets. Uh, one is like a two, actually it's two plates. They have like a sliding scale, which I'll show you guys later. And also uh, it has one with a circular cutout for castles. So it is, it seems pretty universal. And my plan is to mount the Focus One on this. And the Focus One can take the AI, the AI mount as well as the, um, the Radiance mount, which I have. So I just tested it and it works. Uh, so that's my plan. Now, I was checking out some review online for people who have already received this fixture early, and um, they're not all positive. Some of the feedback is that basically just two fixtures slapped together with some brackets and the whole thing is kind of cheap. And there are a lot of complaints about uh, cords coming out on the opposite end of the fixture. Now, I, I'm gonna put it up and then I'll have some personal experience. Uh, but so far I can tell you that the fixture, the construction is not bad. Like these are uh, pretty nice aluminum. Seems to be powder coated, it's just like a nice finish. It's not glossy, anything like that, but this is reasonable. Uh, but if you ask me, especially, especially since you have to purchase bulbs separately and each bulb costs like $20, I do think that if I were to sell this myself, right? Just looking at the material and level of efforts and stuff like that, um, I think a fair price point is probably around like 160, 150, 160. And that's already, I feel like that's already a decent margin of uh, profit. But uh, these units are selling at 250 and T people are still jumping all over them, right? So I think they, pro they probably got the price point right. I mean, they are a business after all, and I'm probably not a good businessman. <laughs> so I think like fair value is probably around the 160 price range. Now, regardless, I'm really glad that a more affordable T5 hybrid option is, came onto the scene. I feel like Eastman, they priced their stuff at like uh, a thousand some dollars for LED plus T5. That's um, too out of reach for a lot of people. So good job bringing this onto the market, Aquatic Life. Uh, I have not heard of the company before this and I'm glad that somebody's finally doing something and targeting this segment because a lot of people are screaming for T5 plus LED combo. And I think that seeing success from Aquatic Life, I'm hoping that more companies are gonna follow suit and provide more options like this. Uh, I think like uh, one thing I would love to see is the dimmable version of T5 and of course uh, like different designs, right? They can fit in, um... actually, you know what? I don't think it can do too much in terms of design. So I think this design is good, pretty minimalist. Uh, but we'll see if the court actually bothers me. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this set up on the 45. Take a good look at the Radeon and UFO combo. I guess uh, if all goes well, this may be the last time you'll see this combo for a while. Hours later. What a mess! Uh, I thought it's gonna be like a pretty straightforward install, but holy crap! I'm making a making a mess up there. Now, uh, basically, I measure once, I'll drill five times, similar to right there. I don't know why I thought it'd be any different. But um, anyways, this is not a uh, DIY channel. It, things are happening. Things are progressing. I'm tweaking it now. So at least they're up, and they seem to be holding. So uh, I guess I'll check back with you when everything's done, when the dust has settled. See you in a bit. Hopefully. Three hours later. All right, Reefers, I'm back. After much struggling, we kind of got it rigged up. Of course, we still got to tweak it so it sits centered. Uh, still got to slap on the LED, but the T5 bulbs are in and this thing is hanging, all right? 
all the wires are wired up. I have not fired up yet. I have no idea if it's gonna turn on a lot. I wanna do this with you together at the same time. So they're all plugged in. It's kind of a mess right now. I'm gonna do some cable management later. Once I throw the switch, this will either work or it will not work. I'm nervous, to be honest. All right, let's, let's see. Oh, I see blue light. I'm so happy because I'm terrible at DIY projects, even when it's plug and play. Holy crap. All right. So I'm actually curious because like right now, this is really high up. Uh, I raise it a little bit higher because I know the focus one is a pretty narrow cone. So I feel like it needs to be a certain height. So this is pretty far off. I'm trying to find a happy medium. I'm gonna hook up the focus one first and I'm gonna try to lower it pro probably here, I think. But this is what blue plus looks like. What the cores look like on the blue plus. All right, to be honest, not too big of a difference. I thought it would be like magical. Not too big of a difference, but uh, definitely no shading. It's actually really interesting looking. Yeah, there's like, there's like no shimmer. There's no shading. Everything is like well lit. Well, except for uh, under the gold, uh, the gold hammer. Um, yeah. Slight, <laughs> slight let down. Well, not really let down actually, now that I'm looking at it. Uh, I was expecting it to be super magical, but I think it takes time for things to get acclimated. But I do see some of the stuff kind of like this more metallic color. I was really paying attention to the uh, bubble tip in the back. I'm trying to see if the gold comes out, but not yet. So anyways, I'm gonna put on the LED. I'm gonna balance the things a little bit and then we'll talk some more once I'm done. Whew, excited. So we got the focus one up, but I'm getting a little situation. I just started up, but uh, I didn't notice that how close this is. During, uh, I guess like when it starts, it needs to rotate left and right uh, in order to, uh, to make sure it's okay. But there's no clearance on this side. So I'm gonna try to, well, good thing these brackets are sliding. So I'm gonna slide them a little bit to the middle to see if that will allow enough clearance for this to uh, rotate completely left and right. All right guys, so I was able to move the whole unit over. I tucked the whole cable underneath. Uh, so hopefully this is enough clearance for it to rotate and calibrate. As you can see uh, from this angle, the light is slightly to the, well up this way of the Manipora and Anemone where they need the most light. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it calibrates. We'll watch it together. See how I tuck the cable underneath so I can park the unit right up against the fixture. All right, here we go. Oh man, I, I don't want to take it. I don't want. I don't want to take it apart. That was a pain in the ass. I don't want to take it apart. I want to test it out. Please work. All right, here we go. Okay. It's calibrating. Yes. 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 I think we got it. Yes. We good. All right, you cleared. Yes. All right. All right, so obviously it's not balanced yet. I gotta tweak it, but I just wanna, here, look at this mess I made. Um, I'm gonna look at the cone of light first to see if this is high enough. I cannot, I don't think I can go any higher with the T5. Uh, there's no point. If anything, I hope that I can put the, drop the T5 down to here. I just wanna see how it affects the cone, uh, because I want as much things under the LED range as possible. So let me work on that real quick. Be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. So I looked at the profile. I think natural, I kind of went through all the different graphs. This one seems to have the most spikes in the red. It goes to 70%. Let me demo this real quick. I have not seen this yet, actually. But just based on the points, I think this one will give the most white and red at the moment. Uh, obviously, I'm gonna build something custom later. Probably gonna turn up all the white and red and just uh, go easy on the blue. But I just wanna see how the color blending will look. All right, we're almost there. And I guess this kind of hit the peak first and this kind of uh, drop off. And the highest red is a 70%, so this should be pretty white. All right, let's see how it looks. All right, it's on. Oh, okay. All right, now it's overpowering the blue. 
So it's definitely enough power to, wow, it's actually really bright. All right, that's a peak, it's falling off now. All right, that's a lot of white. So it's good to see that the LED has enough power to overpower the T5 Blue Plus, the 4 volt Blue Plus, and the coverage seems decent. I mean, I think like coverage comes all the way over here. So unfortunately, the stuff in the back will be relying on T5 Blue Plus. Man, I wish the demo can just drag there. I wanna run it one more time. So this time, let me just pay attention and see uh, what's the coverage. Like it's wide enough, meaning that with these corals on this part, get some of the LED light as well. All right, I'm gonna put the phone down and just look at the tank. Should be coming on any second now. Let's see. And obviously I don't need it to rotate all the way to the back. Uh, for the most part, I'll probably just have it pretty static. All right, so it's coming on and it's gonna ramp up really fast with this graph. Okay, so it looks like it stops right here and we've got some spilling over on this side so I can probably move the whole thing over a little bit. Otherwise half, <laughs> that half is like blue. Okay, that was pretty cool. All right, so I think what I'll do is I will move this whole thing over and then I'll run the simulator a couple times. All right guys, so I have been playing around with the spectrum that I like from the Focus One. I think the color is good, but unfortunately I have to raise it up pretty high to get the coverage. Um, hmm. Cause right now the cone is around here, right? This part is in the shade, that part is okay. But to be this high up, the T5, I feel like it's not that effective. I think the T5 really needs to be like around here. But if I drop it down to here, uh, the Focus One is essentially just enumerating this portion. So I think I may need to put on the Radeon G3 just to see how it looks. Because um, I know G3 for sure, since it was mounted at this height and it has two pucks. So that should have enough spread for this tank. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna switch it out. We're gonna take a look. 2,000 years later. All right, reverse, I'm back. It has been a long night. But as you can see, I'm able to get the Radeon G3 up on the fixture, and it actually fits really well. It looks beautiful. Now, with the two pucks, the, the coverage is perfect. Um, I no longer see like a shaded area, basically the entire tank is covered, which I know it's gonna, because like that's the light I used. So I know it's gonna work. I was hoping that with the Focus One, uh, if I raise it high enough, I can get enough coverage on 24, 24 by 24 tank, even without the ability to uh, swirl the head. And the reason I could not swirl the head is because if you look over here, the way the channel works is that it has to run horizontal. Now, if I put the Focus One horizontal, the head can only swirl uh, back to the back of the tank and to the front. I really want the head to swirl left and right. This way, even if uh, I cannot cover an entire tank, right, I can still bring it down a little bit lower because I know that they'll swerve. And that's that's kind of the secret sauce, right? They can swerve and make sure there's enough coverage on the tank, even though um, at any one time, maybe the beam, the cone beam is just like one, on one portion of the tank. But over the, over the day, it can slowly rotate. But unfortunately, with this configuration, I'm not able to do it with the Focus One. And I don't want to rotate the entire fixture. Uh, because it just looks odd if I mount it this way, uh, if I rotate it 90 degrees. So for now, uh, with the Aquatic Life T5 fixture, I'm sticking with the uh, Radeon 2 pucks. Um, I feel like I'm going to run the same issue if I had the 15, XR15 single puck. But it just so happened that I do have the two pucks that provide good coverage on the 45 gallon tank, so this works out well. <laughs> and I can I can see it already, I can feel it already. I can hear the Radeon fixture saying that, why are you messing around? Just stick with me, I, you always come back to me. And for one reason or another, it's not that the other lights are not great, it's just like, ah, the two pucks. I think that that is really the determining factor for me. It's just good spread, good coverage, I'm used to seeing everything lit. And again, it's a shame because the Focus One, um, the color is good. It, it does mount, it, it works out well. Uh, it's just a shame that I cannot really utilize the uh, rotating head in this configuration. 
if I could mount the Focus 1 with the head pointing in the front and can rotate it left and right, then I think right now we'll be seeing a Focus 1 on there, not a Radeon G3. But unfortunately that is not the case, so I have to hold off testing out the Focus 1 until I really upgrade the tank. And for now I'm just going to stick with the uh, Radeon G3, which is an excellent light by itself. Now coupled with the T5, I'm really curious how things going to work out. Uh, I'm the color, I, I, was, I actually hop onto the laptop, hooked it up, and kind of tweaked the color a little bit so that it plays a little bit better with the T5. Before it was really blue, it's like a Windex blue. Uh, right now it's still kind of like a Windex blue, but I'm kind of like tweaking it. I took off a lot of the blue from the uh, Radeon. But I'm gonna let the tank kind of just chill out, run for a couple days. Uh, when things settle down and I kind of doubt everything in, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about uh, this light fixture, how the Radeon's working with the T5. Um, but for now I'm happy man. I can't believe I actually pulled this off. This is a... Uh, for someone like me who does not like zero DIY projects, the fact that the light fixture is not in the tank right now and I'm not telling you guys about a tank crash, right? Or fire sale because I dropped a light fixture into the tank is a, it's like a minor miracle. So I'm gonna go grab some food. I'm gonna go kind of bask in the glory of a... Uh, uh, well done DIY project and I'm gonna update you um, Well later on in this video, you know, I'm gonna do a follow-up real quick uh, in a few days All right guys, I'm t exhausted. See you in a little bit One week later. All right reefer So I have the aquatic life t5 hybrid fixture over my tank for about a week and I want to share with you my first week impression now huge thanks goes out to Jim as well as uh, his friend Sean for uh, letting me borrow the power meter and coming over to uh, l help me test the different power value uh, with this T5 hybrid. So I have a more concrete understanding of how this light works and how does it compare to before when I was running just the Radeon and UFO. And this is great because something <laughs> something was really obvious, r obviously wrong by the second day. I noticed that a lot of my coral started closing up a little bit like the frog spawn is a lot tighter it still is a lot tighter right now compared to the past and some of the zoa just straight up started changing color especially the uh i'm using my awesome fancy pointer especially those pink one right there uh it actually started developing some kind of striping on the tentacles and the magician at the bottom right actually bleached out quite a bit it became almost like semi-transparent so something was obviously wrong so this happened about two weeks, uh, two days in, and uh, Jim came on the third or fourth day, and the pop, the pop reading surprised me. Actually, it really surprised me. So I'm gonna superimpose the number over the tank right now. The re the number in white means radium plus the T5. All right, so this is full blast this is what I'm running, and the number in blue is just the uh, T5, the hybrid T5. And in the T5, I'm running four ATI Blue Plus bulb. These are the go-to bulbs for T5 these days. And uh, for the Radeon, I'm running at about, oh, so I tweaked with the color spectrum first to see something that mixed well with the T5. I'm running at about 40, 45 intensity uh, in, in, in the case when I was uh, recording the power value. I've since dialed it back down a little bit, but for the power value, that's what I'm running. And obviously you can use whatever whatever LED fixture that you that you have. So what's important in this video is actually the par reading of the T5 fixture. Now, there's a huge argument in terms of like usable par versus per, right? Uh, well, the good thing is that right now I'm using a blue plus. Uh, so most of the spectrum falls under values that is measurable by the uh, by a par meter. If you're running like a tenic blue, a lot of these spectrum falls under um, what a palm meter uh, measures. So a lot of people are saying that a Atenic Blue o, a Atenic O3 is not putting out as many usable par, which is true, but it also outputs a lot of uh, value that palm meter does not, does not compute. But that's a whole different video. And I'm probably gonna make that video as well because I plan to replace one of the Atenic Blue, oh sorry, one of the Blue Plus with a Atenic, Atenic O3. So that's gonna change the game a little bit. Anyways, so for this video, just straight up raw par output from this fixture. And it is totally respectable. Because as I mentioned, my some of my stuff actually started being negatively affected by the high par value. If you look at my older video, uh, I'm gonna use the example of the uh, Froxbot. So the frog spine was measuring about like 250 before, but with the uh, initial setup, it was measuring at 300, 305. So immediately it started like shrinking. 
Uh, so you know, like Euphenius, usually they expand when they don't have enough light. I guess it creates more like surface area, right, to capture light. But the fact that it started contracting, meaning that it's getting a lot of light. And I, once I noticed that, I start dialing back the uh, the radian intensity as well as the photo period of the fixture until I was able to get a par reading. And once I got a reading, of course, I was like, oh my God, this is actually uh, quite a bit higher than what I had before. So I started tweaking the radian. I dialed the radian back. It was running at 100% brightness before. I dialed back to 65. And in the last couple of days, I slowly raised it a little bit each day just to acclimate corals and us not to shock them too much. Uh, so as you can see, the T5 is totally respectable and I have it about, I would say, I estimate about 10 inches over the water right now. I would like to drop it to maybe six inches. I feel like that's uh, where their sweet spot is. But I'm gonna do it over time. And again, I'm gonna replace one of the, uh, uh, one of the Blue Plus with a Atenic 03. And uh, in a nutshell, the reason I'm doing that is because like right now, it, it has kind of like a Windex look, a Windex blue look that um, Blue Plus is known for and a lot of people don't like it, including me. So I tried to tweak it. I tried to like kind of bump up the white uh, in the Radeon. I, I turned down most of the blue in the Radeon. I bump up the white a little bit, but it comes a little bit too white. But at the same time, there's no more royal blue that I can put in to kind of kind of balance out the mix. So I figure one of the, one of the ways to do this is kind of take out one of the Blue Plus bulb. I'm gonna put in one of the Atinic. Uh, visually, it may not like it, it. may not do too much. Like it doesn't. My eye cannot see it. It's a different spectrum. But at least that's one less uh, blue plus that's pumping the uh, Windex blue into this tank. And supposedly that Atenic O3 is gonna bring out some of the more interesting color in some of the corals. It'll give them a little extra pop, uh, either visually or long ter long term. The coral will develop a different type of color. So I'm really excited to try that out. So I think with that, we're gonna see how that goes. But in terms of just like raw power, uh, this T5 is no joke. It's definitely bringing something to the table. I'm really excited to see how the coral is gonna adapt to this kind of new lighting, uh, this lighting spectrum. And already I'm seeing a tiny bit of changes. I noticed that my rose bulb tip anemone seems more fluorescent, especially the, um, the orange or orange rainbow that I have a little bit further up. Uh, the tip started to have a little texture and then it's a little bit more fluorescent. Now, of course, the light has not been over the coral long enough for it to have like such a fundamental change in color, right? So this is just how the, co the light renders certain corals color. But already I feel like that show it shows a little promise already. Uh, so I'm gonna leave this running for a couple months and we'll see how it goes. And some of you may be asking, how come you are always like changing your light? I'll tell you why. Because I keep chasing um, the color of the orange bubble tip anatomy. I saw what it looked like under a T5. I know it can look like that. It can look like bright orange, bright yellow. And I've seen some of the Zoa color. I see some of, some of the SPS color, what they looked like before I went into my tank, right? Uh, so of course, like with SPS, the water quality, the flow and stuff also influence color. But I'm talking about as soon as I go into my tank, it, it looks, it started looking different. So I'm, I'm still trying to crack the code. Uh, I'm still a really new. I'm still really new when it comes to uh, higher end stuff and in terms of color, cor uh, color, color retention. Because back then, when if things are alive, I'm happy. I'm like, hell yeah, things are alive. Things are not dying. I'm not killing things. But now I'm. I want to chase a color. I want to make make sure things display uh, the best color possible. So I'm trying to provide that right setup. And for that reason, that's why I'm trying to experiment with like different LED units. Um, now I'm trying to go with T5 because T5 seems to really uh, uh, render color as well and retain color as well. So I want to try it myself to see if the lighting option would make a difference in terms of coral coloration, especially now that I have my alkalinity and calcium stabilized. So I think light is another thing that I want to tackle. All right, with that said, right now it's all kind of all speculation. Please, this is just like, uh, this. I just want to tell you my thought process. This is not... This, this may not even be the right way, but I just want to let you know why I do what I do. Uh, and of course, this whole journey, I'm going to keep you guys posted, especially after I swap into Atenic 03. I'm really curious how that would affect some of the corals, especially long term. All right, I apologize for the length of this video. This is a really, really long video. But at the same time, I feel like a lot of other reefers may be at the same crossroad as me. They maybe have LED units, right? They're wondering, is it worth it to go T5? 
or should I do a high, or should I do a hybrid? And the uh, atonic, li uh, sorry, the aquatic life is one of the first affordable option for people to go hybrid. Is it worth it? And how does a coral react to the uh, hybrid configuration? Is it really that magical? Because to be honest, when I throw on the T5, I thought that thing's just gonna look nice immediately. But clearly that was not the case as shown, right? It may take some time. However, within just this one week, I do notice a tiny bit of improvement, um, even in just how corals are rendered right, right away under T5. It's not magical, all right? It's not magical. But I do see some improvement, and through this week, I do start seeing some of the corals seems to have a slightly different color now. Right, and this is a gradual process. It's not just like so. This is not just like I flip the switch on the light render core differently. It's more like through this week things started to change a little bit already. So I'm really curious, especially with the Atenic 3 comes in, coming in. I want to see how it looks. So I'll be keeping you you guys posted. This is obviously a developing story, and this is also one reason why I test out different light because I really want to find that perfect combo. Maybe there's no perfect combo, but I just want to find that light that I'm completely happy with. All right, guys, this has gone on way long, way longer than I expected. I'm so sorry for this long video. I know some of you guys hate it, but I just want to, I feel like this is an important topic, especially to me. So I want to just share all my thought process with you guys. Um, yeah, well, hopefully the next one is not going to be this long. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any question or any feedback or any tips to give, please leave a comment below. I really appreciate it, especially when it comes to a more technical video like this. All right, guys, until then, I'm going to see you next Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Thank you as always for watching Reef Squad, and if you made it all the way to, to this point, thank you so much. You are one of the hardcore Reef Squad for sure. All right, see you guys next week. Have a good day.